Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Today we're back to talk about applied energistics again. Today, specifically about digital storage and how to get an ME2 system to interact with your inventory. And it honestly doesn't take that much. You just need some cables from ME2, a storage bus, an ME terminal, and a chest. That's the most basic setup. You'll also need a power supply coming in from an energy cell. We're just going to use the creative one for example purposes though, because we've discussed this in the past. So to set this up at a basic level, you don't even need an ME controller as long as you do not exceed the eight channel limit on the cable that you start with here, which means you're going to use one per storage bus that you attach to your system or one per other device that you're going to be adding, including the ME terminal, which we're going to be putting on right now. Because we do have power, this now says device online, and we are using one of eight channels. To access our inventory, however, all we have to do is take an ME storage bus and directly connect it to an inventory system. And now we're using two of eight channels. If we go into this chest and we add in a whole bunch of blocks and random materials, we can then go into this ME terminal, right click it, and we can see that it has all of the items that are in that chest. And we can take them out and drop other stuff in, like that service quartz bud right there. And go back over to the chest and you can see that they are over here now. So that's it at the absolute most basic level. And you can expand out and put more storage buses on more chests or bigger chests or what have you. And it just all works fine like that. That is the most absolutely simple use case. The other thing is if you're using something like storage drawers or functional storage or something that has a controller unit, I think black hole storage from industrial foregoing also has something like that. You can connect those to the controller unit and access the whole drawer network to get all of the components that are stored in all of those drawers, all from a single storage bus using only one channel. So it's pretty extensible pretty quickly and is actually pretty easy to set up. Now I should note that as you scale this up and add more, you can also click into the storage bus, click this wrench up here that says priority and set a priority for inserting into this box or extracting. And the instructions are right here at the bottom. So we make this a 10 and we see that this chest is empty right now. If we come back over here and throw in this polished granite, you'll see that it's not in this first chest. It skipped over to this other one over here. One of the other things you can do is if we go back into this first one, there's this filtered operation set. And this lets you set a filter of things you can insert or extract. If we just put anything in here, like let's put the polished granite in, if we come back over to here, you will see that it no longer finds anything in the terminal. But if we come over this chest, it's still full because it's only allowing us to insert or extract polished granite from this chest. If I put anything else in here, it's you see that it goes in, but it's actually over in this chest now. But if I put the polished granite in, it appears in the first chest where it's supposed to. If we go back into this filter, however, and we change this to only be on insert and take the polished granite back out, if we look back in here, you see all the items are back because it's only doing it on an insert. If we put these in here, as well as the granite, you'll see that the granite ended up over here but these presses ended up in the other chest. So that's how you can handle very basic filtering. So with the very basics that are out of the way, we probably should talk about a couple of the upgrades to the storage bus real fast, because one of them directly applies to what we just talked about. So coming into the storage bus, the first couple upgrades we have are the capacity card, which if we slot this in, just adds another row to the filters for the storage bus. Pretty simple. The second one is the inverter card. If we put this in, it now turns this in from a white list into a black list, which means these will now not put the inscriber silicon presses in here. Like assuming we make sure to turn this priority back to zero so they're the same, if we now come back over into the semi-terminal and toss those in there, we'll find that they are over in this chest, not the one that is blocking them. And the final one is a fuzzy card, which adds an interesting feature and a new selector over on the left side, the fuzzy comparison. And this is for handling damaged items for what you want to allow in here. Whether it can do any or moves damaged items out entirely, yada, 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 for tossing things basically into like trash cans and whatnot. Hopefully all of that was pretty simple to understand. But what if you just don't want to use chests? What if you want to move into something more digital? and much more extensible. Well, this is the part where we need to start making storage cells and there are item and fluid versions of these. And at first glance, these don't look too difficult to make because this just takes a 1K ME storage component to make, which just requires a processor and a bunch of certus. 
but as you stage up, these require higher tier ones, which require three of the prior tier. So this one only takes one 1K, but the 4K takes three, the 16K takes nine, the 64K takes 27, and the 256 takes 81 of them. Now, the other thing about these ME storage cells is you notice that they always say 63 types. They're limited to 63 different discrete item types on their disk, no matter which size you use. The bytes used, however, go up, and the bytes are determined on how many items you can have in the stack. And the number of bytes used are determined whether how large the stack of the items is, because items that only go up, stack up to one per stack, or that stack up to 16 instead of 64, take up more bytes. So you can only you can store fewer inside the storage cell. So that's probably going to be one of the first things you actually want to automate, but that's not what this tutorial is about. But those are the first primary components you will handle digital storage. And once you have those made, you have two options, the ME chest and the ME drive. The ME chest is basically just a chest with digital storage involved. And you go in here and you add in your disk drive. And once you've got that in, it's accessible from here just as a normal chest would be, where you just throw things in there and they show up in the ME item storage cell. And we can take this out and move this around if we want to. Now, if we put the disc back in, this light on it tells you how full that disc is. Now, if we click on this on the top instead of the side, this acts as a normal chest and we can actually directly interface with this. Now, let's just say you don't actually care if you can access it via a chest at all and you want to store a whole bunch of them in one spot instead. Well, that's what the ME drive is for. You can put a whole bunch of the disks in here, up to 10 in here, and it will act as a giant storage. And let's up the priority to make sure things go into here. And we can come over here, same as before, and just toss a bunch of random junk in here and to fill up the drive some. And now looking at this, you can see much like that one is green, this one is now blue and green, with blue being partially filled and green being completely empty. Now, as I was saying, you can pick these up and move them. So we can just take this out, actually, walk over to the ME chest, swap these around, and now pop this open and all the items are in this one instead. So I think you can see how easy it is to scale up storage once you've got the drives automated to be able to be made, because the disk drives aren't really expensive to make. It's just all of the service that goes into the actual drives themselves that takes up all the effort. But then Ard, what do you do if you want to upgrade your disks and they already have a bunch of items on them? Well, the bad news is there's no easy way to just straight upgrade your items, but there is a solution in the form of the MEIO port. where We can hook this up to the network, come in here, toss the disk we want to offload into here, and watch as it loaded all the items immediately over into this storage cell over here, because it will try to offload it into your network. So if I had wanted to do that to up, upgrade a disk, what I would actually have done was emptied out this chassis, put on a bigger disk, and then have done the exact same thing, because it'll go into the first available disk. So now we have a fully upgraded one, but now we have these empty chassis that are just garbage and not useful. But all you have to do with these is Shift right click them and it'll separate the housing and the chip and you can just toss those back into your system to be auto-crafted back into a higher tier one. All pretty easy so far, right? This is usually one of the very first things I set up with an ME system because this is the primary reason I use these. Now, in addition to this, there are also ways to modify these storage drives to add filters and other upgrades to them. And that's with the cell workbench. You just right click on it, put a cell in to modify and you'll notice that First of all, you can add filters to it to limit what can even be put into the cell to begin with. Like if we only wanted to put in, say, charge service quartz, we could limit it to only that, and then that would fill up all of the storage with a single type. That also means we can add the inverter filter to this to turn this into a blacklist to remove things. We can also do the fuzzy card to do damaged gear or to not allow damaged gear in. And then there's two other new cards in here, one of which I find extremely useful and the other which is of dubious use to me. The first is the overflow destruction card, which is basically a void filter. Once you get above the allowed stack size, it just starts deleting any new items that get pushed into here so that you don't overflow your storage with stuff like a cobblestone generator 
or for fluids either. The fluid's also good for fluid cards. We'll get into the fluids in a minute though. The other one is the equal distribution card. And I think this is intended to make the drives work like a two by two storage drawer. So in this case, it would potentially have like 63 different drawers that are all equally sized, except in practice, as far as we know, that's not actually how it works. When you insert items that have an equal distribution card in, what it actually does is lock it so that each item that is allowed into it has to be basically the same size or like ones bigger because it will equally distribute the bytes available based on the current usage as far as I can tell. I, I don't actually know what the use case for this is because it seems like if anything you would use this for, you're better suited by just having a single drive devoted to an item. Because frankly, the small drives aren't that expensive to make and the disk drives are ludicrously cheap. So making more of them isn't exactly a uh, high cost. All right, and now I think it's time to go into the fluid drives. And if you've watched my series, at least at the point where this is being filmed, you'll notice that I never use the fluid drives because most of the time there are other mods that handle fluids far better than AE2. I find that this is just kind of clunky and doesn't work very well because there are a couple issues with fluids. And yes, I could have gone with lava and water, but let's do nutritional paste instead because that's more interesting. But you need to get them into your network to begin with. In this case, we're using an ME import bus to pull it out of this creative tank and into the network, okay? We'll go into how importers work in the next episode more when we start getting into automation, but you just have to have a method to get liquids in however you're doing this. And then you need a fluid storage cell in storage somewhere. So let's just toss one in here real fast. And you notice that it is now filling up with both of our fluid types. Now, the problem that you're gonna run into is that unless you have an equal distribution card in here, it doesn't care how much you have a fluid in here. If it was just one fluid being pumped in, it will completely use up all of the bytes for that single one. If one gets larger than the other, it also does not care one bit. So it will just, completely fill up your drive entirely and it just gets pretty silly. It becomes hard to manage. So if you're going to use fluid storage, you're gonna to wanna to use priorities and probably overflow upgrades to avoid maxing out your fluid drives. And you're probably gonna to wanna to use filters to keep them locked to a single card more or less because mixing them between cards just doesn't work very well in my experience. That said, I still generally fall back on just using whatever the biggest tanks are in the pack that I'm playing most of the time. But this is an option and it does actually work. This next one is something I've never personally used, but it's the portable item cells, which are kind of like a backpack actually. Because we can take this, put it into the chassis, go over to our terminal, see that we've got our liquids over here, and let's, uh, let's toss some stuff in there. And then we can come back over to the ME drive, take it out, notice that it has a power bar, set up a charger, put it in the charger, let it charge up, and then we can right click it and it's basically a backpack. Pretty nifty. Honestly, since it uses power, I don't really have that much to use for it, but the bigger ones might actually be useful if you're just using it to do mining and stuff. It's not the worst solution, but it is a different one, but I've never actually had a use for this one. The last thing we are going to go over today is the whole reason you set these up to begin with, and that's the upgrade for the ME terminal. Because the crafting terminal works exactly like the ME terminal, except it has a crafting grid on it and you can craft directly out of it and it auto fills from JEI. So if I just want to do say a crafting table, I can come in here, hit the plus button and it will pull the planks out of my terminal here, which is for some reason not showing any items, but clearly the planks are coming from somewhere. And then we can just pull that out and we're done. Oh, mystery solved. It's because I have the word crafting here because I've got the option set on the terminal settings to sync with JEI search. So generally you probably, you may or may not want to have that turned on. That's up to you. Anyway, I hope this helps with setting up your own ME system for storage with AE2. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.